another week, another fresh episode for you. And as always, we've got plenty of dog behaviour tips and we've even got a dog that's a bigger celebrity than your average TV show host. Well, that's not hard. I walk down the street and people think I'm Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah, OK, I can see that. Uh, in our household, though, it's Darcy that gets all the attention. Hey, before we go, can I tell you a dog joke? Mm, I suppose. What do you call a dog magician? I don't know, Guyton. A labracadabrador. <laughs> OK, only a dad could get away with a joke oh, like that. Oh, that's one of the perks of being dads. Here, I'll tell you another one. What do you call a dog that sits in... <laughs> Understanding a dog's body language is not always the easiest thing, but it's a really important one to try and master. Trish, we often do a lot of things wrong when we're approaching dogs by not reading them properly. First instance is we always go up with our hands out like that, don't we? Or we're told that that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's the worst bit of advice. <laughs> and that's just inviting a dog to bite. So we don't recommend you put your hand out. Anytime you want to interact with a dog mm -hmm. that you don't know, we always recommend erring on the side of caution. Um, always make sure that we invite the dog to interact first. Okay. And one of the best ways you can do that is just standing a few metres from the dog, stand to the side, mm -hmm. tap your leg. If the dog is sociable and wants to come up and say hello, it will. And that's your invitation to, to pat and play with the dog. Okay. If the dog doesn't come next to you and stays back, then that's a good indicator that the dog doesn't want to have the interaction with you. So best to leave that dog alone. And if a dog's tied up, so many times people go up to it, but that's something we should not be doing, is it? No, if the dog's tied up, it's, it's tethered. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have a means to escape. So if mm -hmm. it doesn't want you close, it can't get away and okay. so it, w it will bite if it doesn't you know if you get too close so generally the, the rule of thumb is just keep a distance from those dogs okay and then a good good indicator if you're seeing a dog at the park and you're just not sure you have invited it over but you know some people still go up to want to say hi yep. what are some of the things we should be looking for to say hey this dog really doesn't want us there yeah so basically there are a few things to look at in around the face so firstly the mouth is shut dogs that are happy will have their mouth open the other thing is the ears are back and the dog might be backing off and highly stressed dogs, you can see the whites of the eyes. And of course, we call it, uh, the tongue is flicking as well. We call that a tongue flick. Okay. The other thing to be wary of is a wagging tail isn't always a friendly dog. Mm. So it's just the way the dog is wagging its tail. But overall, if the dog is backing off, that's a good indicator the dog doesn't want you coming close. Okay, so that's important. Wherever we go, we should really, I mean, we should do it with people as well. Read body language a little bit better <laughs> and... Uh, Listen to what the dog has to say, even though they're not verbalising it. Exactly. <laughs> For more tips like this, visit the Pictures at Play website. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a puppy? They're so cute and cuddly and fun to play with, but they can also leave quite a mess around the house. Annika's here from Rufus & Coco with some great tips and products on how to prepare for a puppy. Annika, how do I get started? Well, look, this is the Rufus & Coco Rescue Puppy Pack, and in it we have four products. So the first one is called Chew Stopper, and as the name suggests, it's to stop your animal chewing the things you don't want them to chew. Keeping so maybe them away from dad's slippers. That's right. So this contains the world's most bitter ingredient wow. called Bitrix. Yeah, it's yeah. terrific. And it's good to remember with this to use it sparingly only on the items that you want them to stop chewing. The other one we have is called Wee Way. Now, Wee Way is for not just the um, liquid parcels, the wee, but it's also for faeces and vomit. It contains enzymes that help them break down the uric acid crystals and stop them resoiling in the same spot. We have P here. So these are attractant drops that actually help train your animal where to go, whether it's indoors or outdoors, and it contains an organic compound that's an attractant. Great. And then we have um, the posh pee pads. And these are a really fantastic aid. You can use these indoors or outdoors. And, um, and basically they hold up to two cups of urine and those little sticky bits there help really? you to fasten it to the area. And look, I think it's important to remember that like humans, animals usually relieve themselves after meals. So it's good to take your little puppy outdoors after it has its meals, let it go, and then positively reinforce it when it, when it, when it goes in the right spot. You know, but these are also a great aid because if you're needing to leave your puppy all day, then, then if you teach them how to go on these pads, then it certainly will hold the day's worth of mess. And I can imagine they're great for people living in apartments as well. Oh, absolutely, because you can leave them there all day and feel confident that it's going to, you know, contain the mess of the day. <laughs> well, there you have it. Some fantastic products from Rufus and & Coco and some great tips from Annika. Thank you very much. I'm Thank sure you. Rocket's very excited and everybody else is looking forward to being puppy prepared. Just like us, dogs are prone to a number of joint and ligament issues. If left untreated though, they can cause permanent problems. 
that affect overall happiness. What are the most common joint injuries or diseases that you treat? Yeah, so I see a skewed population, Melissa, of the conditions that would be out there in the real world. But my, the backbone of what I would do would be hips, knees, elbows and spines, which we've got some selections here, but that would probably make up 75% of what I do on a daily basis. And what about during the week? Is there an over-representation of, of some particular surgery? Is there one that's more common than that? Uh, cruciate would be the big one. Everyone knows about dogs' cruciates. Bat, faulty knee joints, uh, that would be sort of the most common operation. Potentially kneecaps, patella luxations would be the second most common. It's a little bit unusual how lame he is. Most dogs with a cruciate rupture, toe tap, He's completely holding his leg off the ground. He's got quite a lot of movement or instability. You can see that there. So he's got a ruptured cruciate ligament in that knee. And it is a complete tear. There's two different types of tears, a partial and a complete. I'm often asked if joint and ligament injuries can be left to heal on their own over time, especially when the costs are potentially running into the thousands. And what, what happens if, for example, in those animals that have the cruciate ligament in injury or the disc herniation, if, if they don't have surgery? If I mean, I just took a phone call on a, on a client's case this morning. The discussion point of what do we do if we can't afford the surgery is a daily discussion. And many of these surgeries that I'm doing, you can manage the animal without surgery. A lot of them are either treating arthritis or preventing arthritis. So you can live with arthritis and you can manage it medically. But if we take a young patient that has got minimal arthritis and it's actually got a mechanical problem, in this case the knee is loose, mm. uh, it's far superior to treat the cause to prevent arthritis in the future. So you, the answer is you can manage them without surgery, but there are still costs associated with that and it's an incomplete solution. We're talking That's, about cost. Well, what sort of costs are we looking at? For yeah, example, so for most, that yeah, most of these surgeries I've got on display here are going to cost sort of three to four thousand. It's not 10,000, but it's certainly not one. It's, it's a big cost for the average household to absorb. Um, the joint replacements, we've got a knee replacement here. It's the same design as in humans. It's a metal and plastic um, unconstrained knee and a hip. So we, we would probably do a few of these a week. Uh, these aren't 4,000, they're probably closer to seven or eight. Okay. You can the, see why. Yeah, well the difference is the implants cost a lot here. So they, these implants are costing sort of 3,000 versus 300. So that's the difference. The surgery fee and the perioperative costs for pain relief, fluid therapy, hospitalisation are the same. Little Monty here has had his fair share of joint issues. Thankfully he's on the mend due to prompt surgery but that's why it's so important to take out pet insurance before any issues present themselves, isn't it? Yes. I'm here with John and Julie and they're two beautiful girls, Sophie and Ella. Sophie and Ella are Dachshunds. Sausage dogs is fine. Sausage dog is fine. <laughs> Dachshunds, sausage dogs. Now, these two are such gorgeous little things. How are they bred? Well, they were originally bred um, in Germany to hunt badgers, I believe. And so they're quite a nasty, or tough well, and aggressive. Yeah, badgers are pretty aggressive, so they've got to match it. <laughs> Ferocious little animal, aren't you? Yeah. So these yeah. girls are beautiful. How many uh, followers do they have on Instagram? Yeah, we've got 45,000 now. 45,000. Yeah. Very mm. famous pups. <laughs> and I understand they've been the inspiration for you to develop a watch range. Yeah, yeah. We, we invented the Doxy watch, which um, when you look at the dog, it's got a big body and two little or four little legs. Um, so on the watch, it's got a very big body to the watch and two tiny little hands on it that tell you the time. <laughs> That's brilliant. So 45,000 followers. It's quite a big community. Have you met many of your fans? We certainly have. Uh, some of our very best friends are, are from meeting them through our dogs and Instagram. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? The powers of social media. Yeah. Looks like I've made two new friends today as well. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Sophie. Lovely to meet you, Ella. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The school holidays are coming up and before you know it, it'll be Christmas time. So if you're heading off on a family holiday without your pooch, you want to make sure that they're safe and sound and happy. I've got Jess here from Poor Shake who has a fantastic new website which helps you find a sitter for your dog. How are you Jess? Hi Guy, and I'm good, how are you? Very good, thank you. 
tell me all about Pawshake. Yeah, sure. Well, it's an online platform. It connects pet owners with local trusted pet sitters. Um, and there's a variety of services available. So you can either have a pet sitter take your pet into their home. Um, you can have a pet sitter pop over and actually house sit for you so they can keep an eye on your place. Your dog can stay where he's most comfortable in his own home. Um, and if you're going away for a short time, you can also have someone come over and do home visits so they can take him for a walk, feed him. So how can I be sure that the dog sitters are, are safe or and I can trust them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really important to us. So the meet and greet is really essential um, to start with because you want to feel good about each other in real life. Um, we also verify everybody on the website, so they're all checked out. Um, everybody is insured in case George gets sick or injured, so it's all covered. Um, yeah, and all of our pet sitters have to maintain five stars. It's really easy, you just um, go here, just pop your suburb into the search bar and we go find a sitter and I'll bring up a list of sitters who are near to you. So you can just have a browse, look at their past reviews and if you see a profile that you like the look of. So 80 um, reviews, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of sitters that have been on for ages. So, I mean, you can read all of those reviews, you can get in touch with Kate. Um, so you send her a message and then from there, um, we would organise an informal meet and greet. So you get together, you bring George along, you um, have a chat, ask any questions that you might have. And if that all goes well, you just return to the website and make a booking. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Sounds too easy. It is. And it's local, that's the best part. Yeah, that's keep, the thing. Keep, keep your dog in the same area, in the same parks, the same, totally. the same walking areas. And it's like neighbours looking after neighbours' pets. And I mean, you can't always rely on your neighbours or your family because they go away too, you know. Yeah. Um, they're not always there. And, and you know, a, a kennel can be great, but they book out months in advance. So, so it's true. just another, it's just another option. All right, well, I'd like to book George in for about three nights. Sure thing. So, is anyone there you like the look of? Oh yeah. Check out. This yeah, Kate one. looks nice. Kate looks great. Yeah, probably probably three nights. Yeah, three, three or, or four. four. So I'm not see. sure how long I really want. Are you going away? Oh no, I'm not going anywhere. I just want to get rid of him for a bit. Oh, Geordie. Yeah, we just need a break. Oh, well, poor Jake's perfect for you then. Perfect. Someone will love him. All right, let's book him <laughs> in with Kate. Let's no see, if, let's see if she's available. What a great read. I'm here with Australia's most famous dog, Pikelet, and his mum, Cal, or Ma, Pikelet's Ma. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. Hello, Pikelet. Can I have five? High five. Good boy. Now, he is Australia's most famous dog. Um, what's it like for a puppy to be so famous in the streets and being recognised? Yeah, he does get recognised. He, um, you know, he leads a pretty wonderful life for a dog, that's for sure. Gets invited to lots of places, gets to do lots of activities. That... Yeah, and it's fun being famous and it's a bit of a, an enjoyable ride, but you do use his fame for good. Pikelet's not a, I guess, a Kardashian or a Paris Hilton. <laughs> He's not famous for no reason. Um, he is Australia's um, best big puppy foster brother. Um, and we use his social media to promote positive um, adoption and rescue and um, and even staffies, his breed, which, you know, do get a bad rap. Yep. Um, so, so spreading the word, the, the importance absolutely. of adoption and, and creating awareness for, yeah, foster absolutely. dogs. Absolutely, that they're not, you know, they're not damaged and broken, that they're... There's a big stigma around dogs like staffies and things like that, that they can yeah. be dangerous and, and <laughs> yeah. this, this boy here is nothing but joy no. and love. And he, you know, he has a little chihuahua our sister um, and um, a three-legged spaniel sister who, you know, he, they rule the roost. It's not really pikey. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, he's a great boy. And he's got his own book out. He does. The Extraordinary Life of Pikelet. Yeah. Mate, yeah. you are an absolute inspiration. I'm very proud to meet you. Can I have another handshake? High five. Oh, good boy. Lovely to meet you, Pikelet. Lovely to meet you, Cal. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Rufus and Coco believe all pets deserve to look and feel great and their Australian made range is designed to solve your everyday grooming and cleaning needs. To help your little mate sparkle at the dog park all year round, one lucky viewer is going to win an indulgent prize pack of $500 worth of Rufus and Coco grooming supplies. All you have to do is share your best photo of your pooch and their grooming problems on Instagram with the hashtag WhatADogWants and tell us in 25 words or less what your pet wants to help them look and feel Feel terrific. 
Over the next 14 days, we're also giving away five daily Rufus & Coco prize packs, valued at $30 each. Each pack contains a Rufus & Coco self-cleaning slicker brush and a 4-in-1 pamper spray. For full terms and conditions, visit the Pooches at Play website. Just like us humans, dogs can get motion sickness as well. It can happen in a car, a boat or an aeroplane. You might notice them looking lethargic, yawning, or even maybe a little bit of diarrhea and vomiting. But there are some ways that we can help to ensure that we have a happy pooch on our family road trip. We wanna make sure that they are in their harness and facing forward. That way they can keep their eyes on the road. We also want to make sure that they have a good association with the car. Say they've just gone to the vets in the car, what we could do is we could give them their favourite toy so they've got a nice association for that car ride. It's also important that we give them plenty of fresh air to help keep them nice and cool and calm and only feed them a little bit of food if you're going on a long road trip. Don't forget to give them plenty of water and also lots of toilet breaks so they can stop and stretch their legs because when the car stops moving, then the motion sickness should as well. Isn't that right, Nelson? Let's get the tail out of the way. There we go. Good little boy. Gotcha. And facing forward. Yeah. Ready for a trip? Let's go. Hmm. This week's feature, Take Your Pet Destination, is Sawyer's Lodge and Bald Hills House. Situated in the heart of the food and wine region of North East Victoria, these pet-friendly properties offer unique accommodation in a stunning rural setting. Sawyer's Eco Lodge is nestled in a beautiful native bush landscape. It's ideal for families of up to five and is perfectly located to explore the surrounding region. Bald Hills House can accommodate up to 10 adults in a new-built, high-spec dwelling. Further south in Victoria on the Mornington Peninsula, we have Howard's Hill. Nestled amongst manigums, ancient trees and 30 acres of blissful bush, the converted barn of Howard's Hill is perfect for an intimate retreat. Restored with relaxation in mind, families, couples, dogs and even your own horses will feel right at home with a mix of modern conveniences amongst a spectacular backdrop. For our friends in Western Australia, we have Redgate Forest Retreat. Located in the beautiful wine growing region of Margaret River, on 167 acres, Redgate Forest Retreat is an idyllic country property. There are four accommodation options to choose from, each very private with their own secure fenced yards. With kookaburras in the trees, wineries on the doorstep and stunning WA sunset beaches at the end of the road, it's the perfect getaway destination. Back across the country on the New South Wales coast, we have Hanks at Mollymook. Being just two and a half hours from Canberra and three hours from Sydney, it's ideal for a weekend away, or even an extended holiday with the family. With two living areas, accommodation for eight and two bathrooms, it's the perfect place for families or friends to come together and enjoy the coastal lifestyle that the region has to offer. There are plenty of options to keep young and old entertained, including Wi-Fi and table tennis. The property is fully fenced and just a short walk to dog-friendly Mollymook Beach. But with so much on offer outdoors, you'll likely spend your days exploring this picturesque coastal area and taking advantage of the gorgeous natural environment. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit takeyourpet.com.au. A well-deserved game of fetch is not only beneficial for your dog, but it means that you can have some nice fun time with them as well. But there's a heap of other benefits to playing a game of fetch and chase you with your dogs, isn't there, Robert? Oh, well, it's, <laughs> it's, first of all, it's a game, so that's play. Yes. That's great. That's a happy association. Mm -hmm. So it, it bonds, helps the bond with mm -hmm. uh, the carer, the, the, the owner. But also it's great after being operational for a service dog, for instance. Yes. They, they show that, okay, you're finished now and you have a lot of pleasure. It helps them to bond with the, the hand. Handler. Okay. And you know yourself, if you've got something nice to look forward to at the end of the day, <laughs> the rest of the day is a breeze. I'm not okay. sure it's a game of fetch, but it's also good for their exercise, oh, isn't it? Oh, indeed. Exercise, it gets them focused. And if they're having a happy time in that area, then they're less likely to be anxious in that area. Okay. And does it tap into some of their instinctual needs as well? Oh, yes. Well, you could see it actually as bringing the food back, you might mm. say, back to the wherever they've crashed the puppies. Yes. And so you reward them by throwing it again. Mm -hmm. So you just create a sort of an artificial retrieval system of food. Oh, nice. It is part of the natural repertoire, and the, that's how they existed in the wild. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this whole notion of, of play, and play is just practice. Yes. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's bonding. 
it ticks all the boxes. It does indeed. And also it's a great way, like Ellie, it's great for you, isn't it? Because it's a great way to teach obedience as well, isn't it? Well, it, yes, I think we've got to be a little careful that we don't use too much of this stuff mm -hmm. for obedience work because yes. play should be quite separate. Okay. By all means, have a play session yes. after a few minutes of good obedience work, yes. successful okay. obedience work, because that can be the nice anticipation. It's like you at the end of the day, you know, you switch off, yay, I've got something to look forward to, you know, it makes the whole day go beautifully. Now, Darth loves a game of stick, except yeah. he has a very big habit of chewing them all up. Oh dear, <laughs> that is not a good look. No, it's not. Because the stick itself, the sh you know, the natural stick, mm. in fact, we discourage them from using that. Okay. There are a number of dogs who've been carrying a stick in their mouths, and particularly if they get it in the wrong way, it can actually be driven through. If they touch it on the ground, it can be driven right through to the back of the throat with some very significant consequences I and po possibly death. Oh, that's not good. Well, there you go, Jas. Uh, we won't be playing that with no, sticks indeed. again. So if you want to go find yourself a nice, safe fetch stick, visit the Aussie Dogs website. Thank you, Robert. My pleasure. Ready, Das? Go! <laughs> Georgie, here we go. All right. <laughs> you know what? Every week I'm left thinking there's so much more to canine care than I realised. I just didn't understand how much is involved in keeping our furry friends in tip-top condition. I oh, know, you never stop learning, hey? <laughs> the last thing this guy learned, though, was how to open the bin and check out what was inside. Yeah, that's a bit <laughs> like George, but, you know, it's that free spirit in him that I love so much. I know, it's their cheeky personalities and those little quirks that make them so special, hey, Mom? Well, we hope you enjoyed watching the show and learning about all things dogs. Don't forget to check out the Pooches at Play website. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> did you guys enjoy it? I think you did. Oh no, not another ball. <laughs>